If you were to go back and restart the million dollar case study again today, is there anything you would do differently this time around? To be honest, uh... Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. What's your why? This is the real reason you started your business. As an entrepreneur, there's going to be hard times and lots of challenges. Your family and friends might be relaxing and enjoying their nights and weekends, but you'll likely have to sacrifice some of those. You can only sustain that in the long term when you've got a really deep connection with your why. So if you haven't already, write it down. Connect with it every single day and it will help get you by when things get tough. Today we're gonna get creative and take some photos. This is a great step to take while you're waiting for your product to get made and then shipped over to Amazon. In the last episode, we covered how to create and write your listing, and now we're gonna cover this last major component for your listing. So first, let's take a step back and think about why this is even important. If we think about how a customer purchases, the majority of shoppers on Amazon will begin by first typing in the name of the product that they're after, They'll then scroll through the top listings in order to pick something. What do you think stands out? The price would be one factor, the star rating and the number of reviews two, the title maybe to some degree, but in my opinion, the number one thing that grabs your attention would be the images. You're fighting against a lot of other listings and you may not be able to compete on price, and you only have so much control over the reviews that you get in, but your photos, and in particular here, I'm talking about your main image, is something that you can really use to your advantage to capture a shopper on the page and get them to click. So what are the requirements for your main image? Well, your product needs to fill at least 85% of the image. Images must show only the product that is for sale, with few or no props and no logos, watermarks, or inset images. Images may only contain text that is part of the product. Main images must also be against a pure white background. It must be a photo and not a drawing or illustration, and must not contain excluded accessories. Finally, images must be at least 1000 pixels on the longest side and at least 500 pixels on the shortest side in order for the image to be zoomable. There are a few other specifications for particular categories such as clothing, but you can check out the whole list by clicking on product images style guideline from the image section within your listing. Tell me, how did you get started on Amazon? What's the story? I was starting a business with some partners and that business uh, ended up failing. It was a tech startup. Uh, but to make a long story short, I was searching for an opportunity and I actually had pulled my back and so I was, I was bedridden. And I was just like, I remember I did a, a, a Google search, uh, businesses that you could do online and um, you know, different opportunities came up. But the one that stood out to me the most was uh, selling on Amazon. And I was like, oh, I, I, you could sell on Amazon? I didn't know that you could do it at that point. And um, ironically enough, it was a YouTube video uh, of Greg going through the process of uh, launching uh, their very first million dollar case study product, which was the bamboo sticks. And lo and behold, I just follow along. There was already a few episodes that had already had passed, um, but I caught up fairly quickly and I just kind of stayed on it and learned everything um, from the million dollar case study, applied it and launched my very first product. That's uh, that's an awesome story, man. Tell me, what did it, what did it feel like to then later on go on to work for Jungle Scout and then host your own season of the Million Dollar Case Study or be part of that? I would say it was, it was almost surreal. Um, it was like uh, life kind of coming back full circle, uh, and I, I always find that that's how <laughs> things work out. Um, that first product I launched 
wasn't a major hit or success, but I learned everything and the, the groundwork of how to sell on Amazon. And I just kept trailblazing ahead after that. But to be able to be on the Million Dollar Case Study and working with Greg directly, uh, definitely the, like, the greatest highlight of my life. It, it definitely um, was life altering working with him and, and just being how, seeing how he works and how what his mindset's like is it's just, it's just amazing. Now let's talk about how to get your photos created. Really, it comes down to two main options. The first is you do it yourself or you hire a photographer. The pros of doing it yourself is that it costs you no money, you can do it straight away as long as you have a sample of your product. And in a little bit, I'm gonna demonstrate how you can go about doing this. For option two, there are a few different places that you can outsource this. One is the Jungle Scout market. There are a lot of photographers there that are all experienced with product and lifestyle photography for Amazon. You could find a local photographer and you can even use a photography service that Amazon provides. Now, we actually tried this out with the Jungle Snugs, and to be honest, the quality wasn't that great. It is a fairly affordable option though, but we just didn't find the results that great. But possibly other types of products might get better results. Finally, Seller Central also lists some photography providers. Just go to Apps and Services, Explore Services, and then Imaging to see all the businesses that Amazon has listed. You can click through any of these to get more information about that business, some estimates about their pricing, and then contact them to get started. So when would you do it yourself versus hiring a professional? Well, personally, I'm a fan of professional photography because your photos are so important for your listing. However, if you don't have the budget up front, I think you can get started with some great photos just off of your smartphone. I would choose this option if you don't have the money to begin with and don't have the time to wait for a photographer to receive your product and then turn around the photos. These would be good situations to take your own photos. And also keep in mind that you can always change them in the future. So you could take your own photos to get started and then get professional photos taken down the track and swap them out later. What I do like about professional photography is that while you can definitely get some nice photos yourself, typically you're not going to have the same sort of studio setup that professionals have that allows them to get these sort of unique types of angles and shots and the nice lighting that you probably can't at home. The more creative and different your photos can be, particularly your main image, the better. Even as a photographer myself, I usually outsource this process because I know that it's still gonna take me a fair bit of time to set it all up and uh, that's time that I'd prefer to be working on other parts of my business. But as I said, if you can't afford that upfront or you don't have the time to wait, then DIY is still a great solution. So now let's talk about the types of photos that you might want and how to find inspiration for them. First up is the main image, which we've already covered. Remember, that one needs to be against a white background, minimal propping, no text and logos, etc. For this one, and for a lot of these images, my favorite place to find inspiration is Amazon itself. So I've searched washable pee pads for dogs. Let's take a look at these images. This is a good example of how to display multiple mats. Remember, I've got a three pack, so I quite like that example. Other things I like, don't like, you'll notice that a lot of these listings have this really sort of bad Photoshop job on it. That one's not too bad, but a lot of these are really not to scale. Uh, like if you look at <laughs> this one here, I know it is a big mat at 72 inches, but I'm pretty sure that that is not to scale. But anyway, <laughs> So I'm not really a fan of the bad Photoshop job. For me personally, it almost detracts from the particular product. But if I just look at inspiration or images that I like, this is kind of interesting with the, the corner turn. That's a little bit different. Some of these are showing the packaging as well. So if your product has really nice packaging, it might be something to consider showing in your main image. 
as kind of a selling point or to make it differentiated. I like these sort of top-down type images that show off the pattern on your product. We've got quite a nice pattern on our product, so that's something that uh, I don't mind showing off as well. I don't really like this photo. Something about it looks a little bit messy. So scrolling through these images here is a great way to get ideas for your main image, just to see what stands out to you, which one would you buy from just based off of the images. This is a really great starting place. Another great place to check is Google Images. So I'm gonna place the same search here and see what results come up. You will see that a lot of these are from Amazon listings, but it'll also pull in images from lots of other websites as well. So you might get some ideas here that you wouldn't get elsewhere. I do like Amazon because these are, those are the actual listings that you're gonna be competing against. Those are the ones that you want to stand out from, but Google Images is still another great way just to get inspiration. Another type of image is an infographic style image. This is an image that includes text and graphic design elements to point out key benefits or features of your product. For this, you can also look at competitor listings to see what they've done, but I'd also go back to your bullet points, which should already be calling out the best features of your product then just think of a way that you can capture that in a photo. So for example, with my dog pads, if I wanted to call out that they're non-slip, I think one of these types of images with the corner turned over would be quite good. And then I could have a little arrow pointing to the bottom and saying extra strong grip or whatever else. Another thing I might wanna call out would be multiple uses. So I could show a photo of the mat underneath a crate or covering a couch or different things like that. Maybe even a creative image that shows all of these uses in one image with the text in the middle. Keep in mind that the main image is the only one that is required to have a white background. For all of your other images, you're not limited to that white background. Another thing I might like to call out is that the mat is waterproof. So I could come up with a photo of perhaps water being poured on the mat. You see what I'm doing? Trying to do? Like a pee stain? No, I was trying to, well. Oh, like Jungle Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> That's funny. And so that covers infographic or feature type images. The next one that we've seen works quite well is a comparison chart. This is a great side-by-side -side comparison of your product versus the competition and is another great way to call out your top features. Now, with a lot of these images that I've mentioned, you'll notice there's a lot of design work required. If you've got that skill set, then great. But if not, you can also outsource this task as well. Some photographers, and particularly the ones on Jungle Scout Market that already work with Amazon sellers, may offer image editing and design work like these infographics in their packages. So you could purchase the whole thing, product photos as well as the design. The next cost-effective option would be to take your own photos, again, plan out the different shots, the different parts of your product that you want to call out, but then outsource the design element and get someone else to do that part. Then the third option, which is most cost-effective, is of course to do both of these things yourself. Another type of image that you could include is a packaging shot. This is particularly useful if you've got customized packaging or a more premium gift type product. It can be a great way to show off your cool packaging and add some perceived value to your product. The next type of image is a very powerful one and that is the lifestyle image. This is where you show your product being used. Your aim here should be to show the typical type of person that would use your product. If a shopper can look at your images and see themselves in that situation using your product, then they're gonna be more likely to purchase. Again, you can outsource lifestyle photography to professional photographers and they'll organize a specific photo shoot with models that fit your type of customer and product. So you can get very specific here. But you can also take these yourself. 
Perhaps you can rope in a friend or family member to model for you using your product uh, the way that a typical customer would. A couple of tips here if you're doing it yourself. If you're shooting outside, then aim for early morning or late afternoon. This is when the sunlight is the nicest. Don't shoot in the middle of the day when the sun is directly above you as that gives you nasty shadows and isn't as flattering. Also keep in mind what's inside of your frame. Make sure there's not rubbish or distracting items in the background of your shots. You want the focus to be on the product. With these photos, you're really trying to evoke an emotion here. People connect with people. So you want your model to be evoking happiness or ease of use or whatever the emotion is that you want your customer to feel. In my case, I want Albus to be looking settled and calm and happy on his mat so that other pet owners looking at this photo see it and think, oh, I want my dog to be as calm and as happy as that. Another good example here is the Jungle Snugs baby hooded towels. Here we had the baby wearing the towel. She's obviously smiling and happy. The idea here was that the parents look at this and they think, oh, wouldn't it be great if when my baby got out of the bath, instead of being cold and crying, they'd instead be warm and snuggly and happy. We also had this photo here that shows mum happy as well, because of course we want mum to be happy in this situation also. So keep in mind that evoking emotion is very important. We're emotional beings and that very much affects our buying decisions as well. If you were to go back and restart the million dollar case study again today, is there anything you would do differently this time around? To be honest, uh, no. I think that the million dollar case study was my starting point. Um, I, I don't think that it's going to solve all, uh, it didn't solve all my problems obviously, but that's where it requires a little bit of um, just being industrious and just kind of digging and just a quick Google search oftentimes solves those problems. But I think as a whole, it really taught me the entire process from beginning to end. And um, you know, the, anything in between, I could easily just, you know, either, like I said, do a search or contact um, the Jungle Scout team to get answers. And uh, through that process, I was able to, to launch my very first product. If there was something that I would do a little more extensively is to definitely do patent research. I didn't know enough about that. So I would say, you know, being able to, to really look into products and see um, the ones that, you, that you're interested in, because there's, no, there's going to be a lot of um, temptation to, to try these uh, new products that are being launched, but they may be patented. And so you just want to make sure that you do the, the legwork so that uh, you don't run into any troubles with that. Um, it's going to require an investment, so you want to make the best of your investment. And so that's why doing the homework up front, uh, like I said, the product research and definitely doing a, a very thorough profit analysis, as well as just also looking into the product itself to see if it's patented and uh, patent research goes a long way. First up, you need to select your location. If you don't have many lights available, then another great light source is sunlight. So try to set up near a window that has lots of daylight coming in. All right, so first up, I'm gonna lay out this guy. I'm gonna take this one. Okay, so now we've got it attached up high. I'm gonna roll it down onto the floor. You'll see that we have this nice curvature which will work just the same on a white bed sheet, for instance. Next up, let's get our product out. So I'm gonna begin with a whole product shot inside of my packaging. I'm going to place the product onto the white backdrop, making sure there's a little bit of distance between it and the part that's going up the slope. Let's roll this out a little bit more so that you've got white all around the product. Now at the moment I'm getting a shadow, which is probably from these lights. So I'm gonna turn that off, which has helped. 
And again, you want sunlight coming in and ideally illuminating all of as much area as possible. You wanna get rid of crinkles, which is why you need to iron it beforehand because crinkles will create shadows. Now that I've got my product there, I'm gonna take a few shots with my phone. Okay, so I'm gonna start some initial shots. That's looking good. I'm gonna try to fill the frame as much as I can. Another good setting to try is portrait mode on the iPhone, because what that does is it helps separate the product from the background, which is exactly what we want for product photos. We wanna make that white disappear. I'm even gonna try brightening this up that kind of makes the, the white disappear a little bit more. If you're starting to see substantial shadows on each of the sides, this is where it's a good idea to bring some additional lighting or lamps in on either side and basically keep moving them around until you can cancel out those shadows or at least put the shadows behind the product so that it's not in the photo that you're taking. Or in this case, what I could try is the shadows are on that slope behind. So maybe I need to move the product forward more so that the shadows go down a little bit. They're not maybe quite so apparent. Gonna brighten it up again. Okay. That's pretty good. So now I'm gonna try opening this guy up and taking a photo of the actual mats themselves. So I'm gonna pull them out. All right, so what, I, what do I want to show off? I want people to see the pattern because I feel like that's quite unique. I also might wanna make sure that people can see that there's three of them as well. So let's play around with this. First up, I'm just gonna place it down there as is. Okay, so I'm gonna experiment coming on an angle so that you can see that there's three mats, but I also wanna show off the design. So I'm gonna kind of come up a little bit, try something like that come down, and really I'm just experimenting at this point, seeing what looks good. Now I could even try coming up high, but there's a little bit too much shadow there. Another thing I could try here is to sort of space them out a little bit. So let's say I've got this one in the middle. And you can try different combinations to see what looks best. All right, let's try this. I'm gonna come down a little bit on an angle. Yeah, so you just want to experiment with trying different formations and seeing what looks good. So let's take a few photos of that. That's kind of interesting. I'm gonna see what it looks like if I come down low. Let's try something else. Let's see if I have no idea, I'm not great at this, but you could try something like that maybe. Well, actually, maybe the two designs on the outside. That one. Okay, now I could again try top down. Oops. Or maybe something angled to the side a little bit. 
Let's try that. I think top down probably works best. Okay, so as you can see, really, it's just a matter of experimenting with lots of different photos and taking, taking as many photos as you can. All right, so the last piece of this is if you've taken your own photos, how do you edit and prep them for Amazon? There's lots of different apps out there which you can use directly on your smartphone. So instead of using a specific app, I'll share my top tips on photo editing, keeping it as simple as possible. So starting with your main image, first I would crop it square to make the product as big as possible. You then want the background to be completely white. So if you can still see a little bit of shadow, then I would increase the brightness, or it might be called the whites or highlights. Increase those in the image to get that pure white background. You could then add a little bit of contrast to make the image pop. And finally, add a bit of saturation, which will make the image more colorful and vibrant. It'd be very similar with lifestyle images. I would add a little bit of brightness if needed, a little bit of contrast to make it pop, and maybe some saturation to make it a little more vibrant. Just don't go too overboard on that. For the infographic or feature images, you would edit them the same way. However, you'd still need the design portion to be completed. So if you're outsourcing that to someone with more experience, then I'd just let them do the photo editing as well. So there you have it. That covers product photography for Amazon. Remember, a picture means a thousand words and that holds true on Amazon as well. So make sure you get high quality photos for your listing. But at the same time, don't stress out too much about this part. This part is meant to be fun, so make sure to be creative and have fun with it. Also make sure to always keep moving though. So if you're not completely happy with your own photos or maybe you have some product photos but you don't have any lifestyle photos yet, that's fine. Just launch your product, keep moving forward as you can always update your photos and add more as you go. Now over to you guys. What is one step you're going to take action on today? Are you going to take your own photos or are you going to hire a photographer? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, remember, if you're following along and wanting to build your own Amazon business, then I'd recommend you join the Million Dollar Case Study Challenge. The first steps are joining our private Facebook group. Each week, you receive action items so that you can follow along and be building your own business. The link is in the description. Also visit Jungle Scout if you'd like to see how our leading all-in-one platform can help you sell on Amazon. We have an array of tools from helping you find a product all the way to managing your business. If you'd like to see Jungle Scout in action, then check out the link in the description for a free live demo. In the next episode of the Million Dollar Case Three, Study, two, it's time to talk one, launching zero. products. Learn the latest strategies to make sure your new product gets the best start possible. I'll see you there. Next up, let's get our product out. <laughs> and not and not cut it. <laughs> okay, that's my sinking mark. <laughs>